All right, today is the day. I am Jay Jarvie and we are here with part two of building a supercar from scratch. Now in part one, we said in the description or the title that this was building a supercar from scratch at home in your spare time. Now I've had a few people that are a little bit doubtful of the part about building the car in your spare time and at home. But you're here in my studio, 26 foot square, which is attached to the house and I do do this in my spare time. Most of the time I operate from maybe like nine o'clock to two in the morning in the construction of this, trying to push that more into the day and get more time involved in it. But basically so far to this point, it has been spare time as I have other things going on in my life and other things that I am dedicated to as well. Well, you're probably not here to listen to me chit chat about this kind of things and we can cover that at the end of this video. But let's get into the work and see what we have done since the completion of part one. And here in part two, what's the work that we have accomplished to date? Let's go look at that. In part one, we had just finished putting the floors and the bulkheads into the structure that's going to become our monocoque tub. And we had also inserted a couple of pieces of tubing that are going to be conduit and some areas to transfer wiring and other things through the tub. And now we're going to go ahead and laminate those to the floorboards because everything we put in here is going to become structural into this monocoque tub. So I'm just, uh, like I said, laying some fiberglass over this uh, conduit that's going through here. And that is now uh, bonded to the floors. Now this door area is being cut out so it makes it really easy access into the vehicle. That's a really big problem in a lot of supercars like this, the wide seals. But I am using this tunnel that's going to go through the center and just some smaller door sills. But to reinforce those, we're gonna use some unidirectional fiber, meaning all the fibers are going in one direction. We're gonna build up about six layers on each side of this piece of foam. And this is being laid up on a piece of plastic so that we can take it over and install it into the vehicle. Now I said, during this whole thing, much of the work we're doing originally here is just to get the basic structure down. There is gonna be much more work in putting laminations in this monocoque tub to build strength up. Now this is, uh, like I said, creating our door seals, but it's gonna be covered over in some future steps here. So we need to go ahead and get some of that structural lamination in place because like I said, we're gonna cover that up. So we put that foam core in there with those uh, unidirectional fibers and now I'm going to cover it with some regular fiberglass cloth to just kind of smooth it out. It kind of condenses the unidirectional fibers, pushes the air out and makes it a lot smoother so that we need to be able to go ahead and uh, scuff it up for the next layers to bond to it as well. So we're going to put a couple layers of fiberglass over it to like clean it up and then move on to uh, building that door sill up to the shape it's going to be. So here we've got our tubing laminated our little structural piece here with this door sill that's gonna make the edge of our door sill. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on. Now you see these unidirectional fibers come up and they turn and go back and bond to the bulkheads themselves. And there will be more added on when the added structure comes in, tying to this uh, recess piece here that will be a major lamination of unidirectional fibers. So to build this uh, door sill up to the shape it's gonna be now, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a simple cardboard foam together and pour some expanding urethane foam in there. Now this is not structural foam, but just a foam that's gonna take the shape we're gonna create out of it. And we'll put our laminations over the top of that foam. One of the pieces that needed to be added to this whole door sill area is this uh, strike plate, we might call it, where the door comes down and latches on. We're gonna build that out of a one inch thick piece of uh, urethane foam sheeting. And then we're going to also put some more expanding foam in the back to make the transition from that little uh, strike panel down to the end there a little bit smoother. So tear off our uh, little disposable forms for holding our foam in place. That foam looks kind of ugly right now. We're going to go ahead and trim it up and start shaping it to the structural shape we want. It's a matter of taking some saws and trimming that down. Now the unidirectional fibers are gonna be added again to this structure once it's uh, formed, but we need to go ahead and shape it all up 
and put a layer of fiberglass over it to smooth it out as well. You can cut the major pieces of foam out of the way, but then we will, uh, once we get the major form down, we're going to switch to some other tools being a rasp and then some sandpaper to get it all smoothed out. Just trying to make some decisions on uh, how to get this on here and cut this without getting into cutting something I don't want. And it comes out. Here we go, taking the rasp. Got my vacuum there because this stuff uh, creates a lot of static and this foam just sticks to everything. So I just keep the vacuum right there and uh, suck up all that uh, dust as it goes. But we'll work this thing down with the rasp and sand it. Now this foam has an open cell structure and it's kind of rough and it does not accept fiberglass resin or epoxy resin very well. And so we're going to mix up uh, epoxy with some microspheres, make kind of a paste out of it, or a slurry they would call this, and spread it on. And uh, I'll throw some gloves on in just a moment here and just kind of manually with my hand push that into the cell structure of this foam, smooth it all up. And once that's cured, then I can jump over and uh, sand it, knock down any high areas, and that will give me a really nice, smooth surface to start bonding my next layers of fiberglass. Now when I say the next layers of fiberglass, the next layers are just still working to create a form for our structure here. Not doing a lot of uh, laminations that are going to be structural or be the support for this monocoque tub because this tub is going to have to be really strong in the end. But once it was sanded down nice and smooth, like I said, it then accepts our laminations really well and we can just go ahead and put these foundational layers of fiberglass down. And there we go. Now another area that we could not form in the molds because it's kind of an undercut would have been a complex mold system and we didn't know exactly how it was going to lay out as well with the monocoque tub and the bulkheads in the floor. So we're creating this air duct that comes down underneath the doors just by laying up some paper and some tape to create a release so that we can put some fiberglass on without it sticking to that paper and tape. And then we'll just put a few layers of fiberglass on to get our basic shape and then strip that paper and tape out from the backside. And once it's stripped out, we can now do more laminations on the backside to start building up our strength. And these uh, new layers of laminations at the backside can also turn and join to other structures. Here we got the lap of that fiberglass coming down and hooking to the, the bodywork side of our monocoque tub. And then I'll put another piece of fiberglass on in a couple layers to uh, join this new thing we're building, lapping over and joining it to the bulkhead or firewall, I guess you might say, as it is the back. Now this piece on the outside is going to be a finished surface that's going to be painted and be seen visibly. So we're going to put a, just a layer of slurry on there and uh, sand it down nicely. And there will be one more layer of a really fine cloth that goes on there. that will just be ready for a paint surface. Other things that couldn't be accomplished in the molds are these ducts on both sides of the car. They're going to extend back into the engine compartment. So that would have been uh, really difficult to create a mold that could uh, extend underneath itself. So you just uh, create a pocket there and then we'll cut it out and uh, hand build the structure that goes inside that. This side has a little bit of a brown half circle there. You can see this will be the engine fuel filling area. So a little bit extends into that vent or the ductwork there, but we will have to create, like I said, the extension that goes into the engine compartment. And then we're gonna switch over to the other side and show you how that was done. I needed a template for a piece of uh, structural foam that's gonna go in here and hold all this together. So using a piece of paper, just a really simple, gives you the ability to just take a pair of scissors and cut. 
try it again, trim a little bit more until you get it just right so it fits in there. But once I get my template done, I'm going to take that template over and transfer it to a piece of uh, eighth inch foam. Now you can tell that I could have flipped the tub upside down and put this on, but what we're going to do is hold this whole assembly, we'll call it our lamination assembly. We're going to hold it in place with some sticks and clamps from the backside. I'm going to run across, check my template on the other side as well. Good. I know now that I can use that template on both sides. So I'll save that somewhere, but we're going to transfer that template to like I said, our structural foam sheeting. And once we have that uh, piece of foam that's going to hold things together, I need to now cut some fiberglass and get ready to bond it all in place. So we'll cut out four or five pieces of uh, fiberglass and we will laminate them all together on the bench and then transfer the whole thing over to the car as a unit. So we will prep that piece of foam by uh, putting some resin right on top of it and then just go ahead and start uh, saturating our fiberglass cloth and keep adding layers and building up this whole Now you'll notice that the fiberglass cloth is uh, about an inch larger than the foam itself. So once it goes over, the foam will create the extension of this air duct into the engine compartment. But the extra fiberglass cloth that laps over will be touching the bodywork and the bulkhead. And so they can be pushed against that. A little extra resin will be added and those will bond to those surfaces. This will give everything a little bit of a more structural strength as well as we start getting uh, multi-point connections and all these fiberglass parts. Now you can see pushing the fiberglass areas against, uh, like I said, the bodywork and the rear firewall bulkhead. And finding a need to push it up a little higher and the propping it in place. And now I'm working the Sorry, the camera is not on the backside, so you can see what's actually going on, but I am just taking the brush and pushing all that fiberglass that was lapped off the edge of that foam, pushing it into place. And once it's all held rigidly, I can also come in here and add some fiberglass to the top. You'll notice this is actually a piece of Kevlar because I don't want to build this fiberglass on the top side up real thick because it's got to be kind of a smooth transition coming off the existing bodywork going back into that duct. And so to add a little strength, the Kevlar will make it so that if somebody happened to lean on that or whatever, it wouldn't fracture the fiberglass. Or if it did fracture the fiberglass, it would uh, hold by the Kevlar. You can also uh, strengthen a couple of what we call hard points. This is where the front subframe is going to mount through. You can't have a subframe or some other thing bolted through foam where the bolts would just compress the foam and uh, come loose over time. So the foam is cut away. So you fiberglass one side, fiberglass the other side, and then it has fiberglass to bond, fiberglass bond through the structure. Now I'm also, uh, like I said, this is all just uh, building up a foundation layer so that we have a good solid surface to start working on our major fiberglass layups. This is the cutout where the transmission will be going through that firewall bulkhead and into the engine compartment. I say into the engine compartment, there will be a tunnel. So it will not be in the compartment, but going into the tunnel in the passenger compartment. So typically we do want as large piece of fiberglass as we can to create structural pieces, but we're just going to use small pieces because this is just to create a foundation layer, harden up these surfaces. Now, luckily, since I said we we're just building foundation layers, I've come to the conclusion as things are getting built that I did not have enough foot room. At least it was just going to be a real problematic and having to ride with your feet together all the time. So I decided to expand this out, look at some calculations and found that my wheel turn lock to lock was not going to actually hit this area that I thought it might. So we're going to cut this area out and expand our footwell area. That's what it is with building a prototype like this. It is 
like that a prototype because we are trying to learn and find out what the problems might be in the development of a car. So we found that foot room was going to be way too limited. So we're going to cut this out and expand it out. And we're going to add only about two and a half inches, but that seemed once we were done, it seemed to be a great move and very much needed. Two and a half inches was a lot of expansion in the world of a small supercar. So once the old uh, area was cut out, we're going to add, like I said, two and a half inches. So we're going to build a box out of foam. Now on these edges, they will be bonded and left in place. But that open area where I'm working through right now, just as we mentioned before, it has to be fiberglass to fiberglass because there's going to be another hard point area where the subframe will be bolted through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in just a, a little thin piece of uh, foam core board. And I'm going to put that in place and then I'm going to put a releasing agent on it, a piece of peel ply, so that I can, once the lamination is done and it's hardened up, I can just tear it out from the backside and fiberglass from the backside, fiberglass against fiberglass. So we will put three or four layers on here. Like I said, we have not really moved into the full high strength laminations for this monocoque tub, but just these foundation layers to get our basic structure down. But we're getting pretty close. We have the front bulkhead, the rear bulkheads, and the floor. The side seals, they were like we said, we formed those up. And it will be now just to uh, building the tunnel. We have not done the tunnel yet because we are still working on some mechanical components that are going to run through there, being our center differential transmission and drive shafts. But there it is, our footwell expanded. Now, another thing when these changes you're coming across with the development of a prototype, I found that once the rear subframe was put into place that the turbochargers were way too close to the rear bulkhead and with the heat there and other problems of vibration I decided to move them about three and a half inches south and so I built this plate to mount the turbos on so that I can bring them off and on at my leisure and that of course caused the whole exhaust assembly to be too long and now I need to rebuild it to shorten it up and it's just a matter of, uh, in this case, not trying to bend it all, but actually just uh, buy the fittings and cut and fit them to go between all the components that I need to. And of course, we're running right alongside the coilovers and fairly close to the belt system on the engine. So we will be uh, building a system of wrapping these exhaust pipes and a heat shield will also come between the coilovers and that belt, as I said. So it's just a matter of uh, pipe fitting. Maybe if you played a game as a kid of a card game where you put pipes together, maybe that was all training for this moment in your life. Another thing that needs to be added to this exhaust system is a uh, the turbo wastegate overflows. Typically, they all just dump straight into the exhaust pipe, but we are going to uh, extend them out on their own tube give them a little bit of laminar flow before they join the rest of the exhaust instead of uh, dumping it and causing a little turbulence right at the output of the turbo. There is a lot of uh, testing and fitting in this process, making sure that things don't touch because otherwise you get terrible uh, rattling and vibration problems. But once we get it all fit, we will tack weld it together. Now, it's kind of difficult to get to the backside and in between pipes, why it's here in the subframe with the engine stuff around it. So like I said, we're going to tack weld it and then move it to the bench. Bring in a little help to keep it in position so the gravity doesn't keep pulling it out of the way. Three tacks will keep it from uh, bending or rotating. And once I know all that exhaust system is uh, 
now fairly rigidly in place. I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, cutting. I need to cut a hole for those uh, wastegate dumps to uh, join the whole system. Drop it in place, mark it with a pen. Now, they was, as they meet here, they create kind of an oval. So instead of uh, getting a hole saw out, I'm going to try the old trusty method of just uh, drilling out a perforated uh, hole and then get a little oscillating saw, cut out the remainder of the little tabs. That'll give me my joint, the hole for the joint of that Turbo sort of wastegate. Now it looks like it works. So let's take this thing off and haul it to the welding table. And there it is, free. Going to be much easier to weld now. Now I have one more component that I am redoing. This is the front lower control arms for the suspension. And I'm going to use a piece of uh, chromoly tubing, but I'm going to slice that tubing in half and use half a tube. Built it, the idea is that you could create the basic geometry and have it all held together by this uh, water jet cut plate of steel. And then I'll have all the components will just fit together on it. Now this fits much better after a little grinding. And these suspension pieces are fully adjustable by these uh, threaded rod ends. We will uh, weld the threaded bung part to the whole assembly. And then our uh, urethane bushing rod ends will be able to uh, thread into those and be able to be uh, adjusted back and forth. Like I said, we can just take this tubing now and follow the geometry of this steel plate, which is uh, cut very accurately by water jet leave just a fraction of the lower base plate extending out past the half tubing and that will give us our weld surface. So once we got everything cut to match our base plate, um, we'll clean up all the oxidation off of our tubing, put little bevels on so we get a good penetrating welds, and then we can fit it all back onto that base plate and start tacking and welding it together. I use a lot of water jet cutting and uh, parts made this way because you can get a lot of accuracy without having to do cutting and machining yourself. I said this uh, base plate is just perfect to hold every component in alignment just by using line of sight. Any deviation beyond what we can do by hand here without having to use a jig can be aligned, like I said, with the ability to thread our suspension bushings in and out of those. And the car is designed with uh, adjustability at every point, every corner on the suspension top and bottom so that we can adjust all of our toes, camber, caster, and those things with all the adjustments of those threaded rod ends. So our threaded uh, bungs there, they're welded to the base plate and the half tubing goes over the top of those and is welded to it again. So it has a lot of strength in being double welded. And it's just about there. We got a couple of little strengthening tabs that need to run across the top and a mounting point for our push rod. And there it is, powder coated, cleaned up, ready to go on the car. Now we're moving on to some uh, more body panel work. This is the rear clamshell structure. I have already laid up um, about six layers of fiberglass on this thing. You're going to watch me now do some reinforcement to the rear clamshell. Now this is a Nomex honeycomb core and I've bonded it in place. The magic of editing is already done, but I'm taking and beveling with this little tiny sander. Going to go and bevel the edge so that the fiberglass layers that go over the top of this honeycomb um, can have a nice smooth transition rather than the jagged uh, scissor cut edge. And over on the bench, I uh, pre-laminated four layers of fiberglass cloth together, kind of make my own pre-preg, and bring it over and lay it across the Nomex. You can't 
actually lay dry cloth across the Nomex and add resin because the resin will just uh, travel through the cloth and fill the cells of the honeycomb, kind of defeating the purpose of it being a lightweight core material. Now, why that's all curing, I'm going to go back over to the bench on a piece of glass, build up some laminations, and this is going to be our wheel well liners. So just a layer after layer built up on a piece of glass that's got some releasing agent on it. We will uh, saturate that fiberglass cloth with some epoxy and let it cure. And that will uh, be able to form our half arc wheel wells. So the next day as those things are cured, you come in, pop them off the glass and we'll trim those up and get them ready to go in. Now they're going to go around these wheel wells, but I'm going to go ahead and add another couple of pieces of glass in here. Now the, this arch over the wheel well, that curve, that compound curve in the of that rear area is makes for a lot of strength in having a compound shape in the fiberglass. But we're going to add a couple of pieces of cloth because we need a uh, fresh resin anyway to be in that area to hold this wheel well to be bonded in place. So we put that layer of glass in there to add some resin and add some strength. We drop our wheel well in. It is held in its arc position by some string and clamps there, of course. Just shorten the strings up to increase your angle. And a little piece of foam on the outside to hold the outside edge in place. And then we're going to do some little strips of fiberglass cloth to laminate this wheel well. We might call a rain guard of the wheel well just to keep the elements out of the engine compartment and also some fiberglass laminations over the little piece of foam on the outside edge. And we will go back, once we install it in the car, we we need to trim this little uh, rain guard wheel well to fit around some of the components. Once that's trimmed, we'll come back and later add a lot more laminations to strengthen this thing up. But with the two wheel wells bonded in place, it's time to uh, pull this thing out of the mold. Ooh, got a sliver. Better get some gloves. I'm pull it out of the mold and let's uh, give it a try on the car. Still a little rough around that hinge where the hinge goes into the tub. But we want to try this thing, see how it's going to look. So let's push it into place. Now the subframe has a pretty great structure in parallel tubing with some diagonal bracing, but we're also going to add another upper brace that's going to tie to the top of the bulkhead. And once the bungs are in place with a one mounted to the bulkhead and one to these little steel towers, we're going to cut a piece of chromoly tubing that have these weld-in bungs. And it's a cut the right length, so we're going to take it in now and weld it, weld the bungs in place. Now this tube can come out. Like I said, it wasn't welded in place as part of the rear subframe because it would be in the way whenever you tried to do any major work on the engine area. So this is uh, totally removable from the subframe structure. And there they are. Now they run through the kind of uh, buttress of the rear around the window. So we want to put this on to make sure that those uh, upper subframes travel through the buttress without rubbing and it seems like they fit. On to the next piece, the major component that we got completed was the bonnet, the front hood. The process, of course, if you have seen part one, is putting on these metal flashings that create our turn back flange. And all these flashings are clamped in place. We have a uh, wax the hood and once we put these flashings on, we'll go ahead and add one more layer of a release agent and start laminating. Of course, here on the front bonnet, we have a headlight area, so they need some flashings as well. Clamp those all in place and we will be ready to start doing our laminations. We will go ahead and build up about six layers of fiberglass cloth on the first layers, and then we will have to start doing something to add some reinforcement to this thing. Again, luckily this, uh, this component, this, uh, front clamshell has a lot of uh, compound curves in it and that is always good for adding strength immediately rather than having flat panels. 
But even though there are some large and complex curves in this, there are a few flat areas that we're going to want to reinforce. So a little nut, tip and nut and tip. We will uh, get some things trimmed so that these pieces of fiberglass can work around some very complex curves and around our flashings. Like going with some uh, larger pieces of fiberglass cloth, and then we'll go with some uh, fiberglass tapes to go up underneath the flashing. And then just going around building our strength up in layer after layer. And this I'm talking about here, this is one of the major curves around the wheel well, again, that creates a lot of strength, but we will go ahead and build some fiberglass strength in those areas with layers and then switch to adding strength through some other process. And that process is here. We are taking some strips of foam that have been rounded on the top side, kind of half circle. And we're going to cut those to fit in kind of a V shape. We'll build another one that goes between those two bumps and we call them the nose holes and one across the front grill opening and bond those pieces of foam in place and then go ahead and uh, put some fiberglass over the top of those to bond them to the whole structure. And with the two layers and that kind of tubing that fiberglass tubing that this creates by laminating these pieces of foam underneath, they'll add a lot of rigidity to keeping that whole bonnet or hood from flexing. Now, once we get these uh, little foam pieces laminated under with about three or four layers of cloth, I'll go ahead and put a couple more layers of cloth over the whole entire hood, but it still won't be the final amount or final tally of laminations on this thing because there still are a few things that need to be added to the bottom of this hood. Mostly things like the hard point mounting points for the hinges, the latch mechanism, and probably a couple of little places where the headlights themselves will have components that come to their position. So we will get, a, like I said, laminations across this thing to get it built to a certain level, but we will be coming back in the end and adding about four more layers of fiberglass to the whole thing to tie, like I said, all the hard point laminations in place. But this is cured for now, and we're going to strip it down and pull it out of the mold and see how it looks. Take all the clamps off, strip all the flashing off, and then start trying to get this thing to come loose. Just a matter of taking some plastic wedges, little plastic tools so you don't mar your mold, and a little pressure, and it starts popping loose. You can see as it comes loose, it, the translucency of the bond disappears. Only thing left at the very center, and with a little pressure, we can get that to pop loose as well. Go back and forth, make it even, and it is free. And there it is. Looks nice. One more major piece to create, and that is our rear bumper. Again, repeat of the same process. We have these uh, flanges on the mold that we need to put a piece of uh, sheet metal to turn it in the opposite direction so it comes back and creates a turn back flange on our part. So a couple of these uh, have some major curves in them. So we're gonna take a piece of sheet metal and trim it to that shape. Clamp them in place. Once all this sheet metal is in place, we can uh, put a releasing agent on it and start laminations. Now I put the first layer on myself and I've been able to do most of these larger components in stages, work on it one day, come back and uh, scuff it and put more layers on. But this one I thought might as well, it's a little bit smaller. Let's get it all done in one day. So I brought in some help, brought in a friend to help me uh, keep going. That way I can go and mix epoxy and he can keep putting laminations on and just make it a one continuous run until the whole thing is done. And I say done, but it's the same process. It's a still 
it would once we pull it out of the mold it will still be a little bit lighter weight than it will be in the end because we need to go and try it onto the vehicle and put the hard points and other attachment points in and then laminate some more another thing with this rear piece is we're going to add some kevlar now the kevlar is uh more i should say more it has greater strengths in certain factors and that is that once something hits it in the back, it will not fracture and break away and it will just stay attached. Even if it's broken, it will still stay attached to the structure. So we put some Kevlar on there, put a couple more layers of fiberglass, and this thing is now ready to pull out of the mold as well. Strip off the flashings and start getting our wedges and prying it loose. And this one has these large vents that come out the back. They seem to want to hold the little light tapping, not enough to fracture the mold or anything, just a little light tapping. We'll get those to break loose. And it's a uh, pressure and it pops loose as well. We have a rear bumper. Now to hold these uh, parts in place, the rear bumper and the front clamshell of the bonnet, we have to have some structure that attaches to our rear subframes and gives us something to bolt those pieces to. Now, in case of the rear, I had this box structure made out of aluminum sheeting, and it is a bin water jet cut to have these slots and tabs. So it's a matter of uh, fitting it all together, welding the tabs into the slots. Now it's gonna be mounted in a couple of places. One of those places needs to be this uh, quarter inch piece of aluminum that bolts to the subframe, comes up, and mounts to their box structure. And to bolt them together, we're gonna to insert some blind rivet nuts. And so put it together, pre-drill it, so that we have a hole goes through the two of them. Come back and build, drill the larger holes where the rivet nuts themselves will go into the bottom aluminum structure. Drill and drill, I guess. Now I got the right size. And those rivet nuts fit. We'll get our tool out and expand those into place. Put it all back together. That seems to be the whole process of building a car like this. Put it together, take it apart, put it together and take it apart until it's one last time we put it together. Anyway, the box structure fits. Throw our clamshell back on. Oh yes, it fits and holds it nicely in place. But now we need to extend that box structure down to the rear bumper. And so we need to trim these uh, vent holes out. And once we know the alignment with the box structure, I'm gonna throw a plumb bob through there to transfer some measurements. And drill that hole, throw it on the floor, prop it up to get it leveled where it needs to be, according to our plumb bob. Throw the laser down and mark it where it's going to be trimmed. Now the laser can pass through that little drill hole from the plumb bob and go to the opposite side. So now I can mark both sides. And then we'll trim them off with our little oscillating saw. Now like I said, this is a just a rough cut because we will be coming back and uh, adding some more hard points, some mounting points into the fiberglass, but that has to be all done on the assembly and then so we will come back do some laminating to those hard points and also finish adding some straight to those fiberglass parts now onto the front structure we need another structure in the front to hold the front bonnet in place and the lower quarter panels and the splitter so i am tapping a couple of holes through the subframe this little flange which is going to be where they anti-roll bar is going to pass through that tube. So we are going to mount these little aluminum panels on here. This is going to create our crash structure and the mounting system for, like I said, all those components up front. So to assemble this whole thing, it's all kind of done the same way as the back one. Slot and tab construction with some aluminum, what eighth inch aluminum still, or aluminum plate. Put the outside plates in plate in place and uh, put this little box structure in. It needs to be trimmed just a little bit to fit around that subframe tube. So mark it there. I'll take it off and cut it. And we'll also go in and uh, 
weld this box structure together, sanding all the tabs as they come through so that they get welded nicely. And once we get this uh, boxes themselves welded, we'll go back and of course, trial and fit, trial and fit. So we have our outside boxes that we're installing now and we're gonna have to tie them together. We have some pieces of crossover pieces that need to be attached to this whole structure as well. And they will go on with the same blind rivet nut system. So I have a drop that cross piece into place, marked it. Now I am uh, putting the blind rivet nuts in. And this crossover piece will also have a couple of holes that bolt to the that top tube of the subframe you see there. And we have another crossover piece that's gonna go across the lower bottom. And it's the same process of put it in place, mark it, drill through the two of them, take the outside surface off, drill the holes bigger, put blind rivet nuts in, and then we can uh, bolt it in place with those threaded inserts. It's getting close. I have one more piece that needs to go back out to the shop and weld it because it's gonna have a couple of round holes that are gonna be the radiator mounts. And all the pieces are got their final welds in place. And one more, we'll say final, but it's never final until you're driving on the road. But we're gonna put a, uh, another trial fit together. You notice the little tabs up front are trimmed to fit the bonnet. So we're gonna bolt it all in place and we're gonna do a, a trial fit of a radiator. If I get this thing lined up, it's good to go. Radiator fits in. All right, well that brings the air tape project to the point where you see it here, sitting on the floor. If you have not seen part one, I will put a link in the description down below and you can watch that video and see an overall view of the project coming up to the point where you've just completed this video. I'll also put a link down that takes you to the very beginning of the individual videos if you are interested in watching more in depth and the whole process of the construction, you can go down and start with that video and then work your way forward. I would invite you as well to go down and subscribe to the channel, ring the little icon bell so that YouTube will notify you when the videos come out. We do have a video on the Aerotay project that comes out every Thursday. And if you're into the kind of thing, you can follow along each week as we progress in the construction of this project hopefully soon having it driving and be able to test it on the road. Now there is a reoccurring question that I often hear in the comments regarding why I did not use 3D modeling and a CNC process to create the plug that we took the molds off of for this. And there are lots of reasons. Like I said, jump down into the description and go watch that video and you can see some of the answers there. But still it seems like people don't understand from those videos or maybe they haven't seen all the videos to get a full grip of why I did it that way. So I'm gonna cover that here just a little bit. Um, the first thing is when you are working in 3D, although 3D is great at visualizing things, it is not the same as having the tactile feel while you are actually working on the full-size model. And you cannot step back and look at it and see it from different angles. Now, people will say, well, there's VR, and that is a great way to see it in that virtual world. But a real true VR system to be able to do that is extremely expensive. And even in the automotive development world by the big manufacturers, they still build clay models to see it in the real world before they actually go into production. I am not opposed to using 3D and CNC processes. In fact, we are going to use it on this project. This is going to be the Leviathan, a off-road RV. We are gonna call it a super van to go along with our super car. You can also connect with this channel and watch that project as well. We will be building them concurrently. And like I said, this project we will be modeling and using some CNC processes to build it. So there you go. You have another reason to go down and subscribe to the channel. And so you can follow the process and the build of the Leviathan Supervan. 
Anyway, that is our video. We will come back with part three as we complete the Arete. And of course, like I said, you are always welcome to follow the channel and see the weekly videos and the build process as it goes step by step. But thanks for watching this video and hope you come back and see us again.